Hey guys, welcome to another video series. This is going to be on Cake PHP, and we're going to be creating a login registration system. All right, now we're using Cake version 3.1, and um, let's go ahead and get started. Now, as far as an environment, you're going to need in a well, you don't need an Apache server. There's other servers you can use, but it's definitely uh, recommended. And uh, if you are on a local machine and you don't have a server up and running, you can use something like XAMPP or, or XAMPP as it's also pronounced. Um, that's what I'll be using and it gives you an Apache server, uh, MariaDB which is just a drop in for MySQL and PHP. All right, So it gives you everything you need to run Cake PHP. So I already have it installed but um, I actually have a video showing you how to set it up but it's really easy. You can go ahead and download it for Windows, Linux, or Mac. So get that set up. Once you do, you'll have this um, XAMPP control panel. All right, and you can see we have Apache running, we have MySQL running. Um, and the next thing we're going to need to do is install Composer. Okay, now Composer is a dependency manager for PHP, and we can use it to install and set up Cake PHP. All right, so that's the first thing we're going to do is install Composer. So if we go to getting started, uh, there's a whole bunch of information, documentation. There's a, there's a few ways to install it. You can use curl if you'd like. Uh, we don't have curl, so we're going to be using just PHP, okay, which is this command right here. So we want to grab that and go into our command line or shell. Um, Zamp has a really handy button right here just to take you right to your command line. Now htdocs is going to be the server root, so let's go into htdocs, and we're going to want um, we're going to want to install Composer here, so that we can just generate um, applications right in the server folder. All right, now to install, we're going to paste that that uh, command and run it. All right. Now it created a file called composer.far, P-H-A-R, and that's what we're going to want to use to run it. All right, you can see it says use it, PHP composer.far. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll say PHP. Actually, you know what? Let me make this. Let me make this a little bigger for you, so you guys can see it. Uh, let's see properties. There we go. All right, so PHP composer.far and then we're going to um, what is it create project create dash project and then you want to add this flag uh, prefer dash dist and then we want to say cake php slash app and then whatever you want to name your app let's just call it my login and that's going to go ahead and generate the application and create a my login folder right in your HT docs. All right, so I have quite a bit of um, different folders here, but you can see my login, and we'll just wait till that's done. All right, so it's going to ask about setting folder permissions. I'm just going to say yes. And now it should create that folder. So let's go cd my login. And let's see if we can go to localhost slash my login. And there we go. So this is the cake PHP landing page. Now you'll notice that we get we have all checks, which is good. This one is going to be an X because we didn't connect to a database yet. Now I do want to mention something. If you're getting some strange error um, and this isn't showing, it might be because you you don't you have um, you don't have a, an extension enabled that should be enabled. So if you get that, just try this. Go into XAMPP or XAMPP and then PHP and then PHP.ini and you're going to want to just search for intl. All right, in this extension right here, you want to make sure that's enabled. And to do that, you want to just remove the semicolon in front of it. 
all right because if you don't if you have this disabled you may have some problems all right so do that and then just save it all right and then go ahead and try again all right so let's go ahead and set up a database so to do that we're going to go to localhost slash php my admin and we'll go to databases and create a new database we'll just call this my login all right and we're going to want to create a users table and let's say uh, six fields all right so we're going to want let me just make this a little wider okay we're going to want an id that's going to be the primary key we also want it to auto increment so you want to check that ai and make sure this has primary okay next we'll do a name that'll be a varchar of let's say 100 okay we'll have an email that'll be a varchar of 255 let's just make them all 255 okay we'll also need a password and we'll do 255 and we'll need let's see let's do created oops which will be a date time field which is right here and also modified which will also be a date time field. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and save that. All right, and I'm also gonna create another table um, called posts. All right, now I'm not gonna make a, a full blog here. I just want something else aside from users. Okay, so when we log in, we can see at least we have something else to, to look at. Okay, so posts, let's say six, and this will also have an ID, which will be the primary key and auto increment. And then we'll have a post title, which will be varchar255 body. Okay, body is going to be uh, text. And we're going to want a user ID. So we're going to say user underscore ID. That's going to be an int. And that's actually going to be a foreign key for the users table. And then we'll do created, which will be a date time, and then modified. All right, so we'll save that. And that's going to do it for our database. So now what we want to do is go back into our command line. And actually, you know what, before we do that, we need to connect our database. So in Sublime Text, I'm just going to link my, the project folder, which is in C drive, XAMPP, HT Docs, and my login. All right, now <clears throat> the file that you want to configure your database in is in config and then app.php. All right, and we're going to want to go down to where it says data set. I'm sorry, data sources. And we're going to change the username to the database username and your database password and the database name. All right, so save that. And now if you go back to the landing page and reload, you can see that we're connected to the database. Get that out of there. So now we can go ahead and close that config file and we're going to go back to the command line. Now we're going to run something called bake, which is um, it's basically a code generator or a scaffolding tool. Um, it'll go ahead and set up our users, controller, model, templates, uh, as well as our posts. So what we're going to do is say bin now, if you're using Windows like I am, you're going to want to do a backslash. So bin slash cake, then bake all users. Okay, and that's going to go ahead and run. And then we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to say all posts. Okay, and now if we go back and we look in the source SRC folder, that's where all of our 
files we'll be working with are. And we look in controller, you can see we have um, users controller and we have post controller. Okay, those were just created in the model. We have post table, users table in the view, uh, not the view, the template. We're going to have a, a posts folder and a users folder. Okay, so that's all set up for us. And it actually should have set our routes up too. If we go to config routes and we go down, actually, it doesn't set them up, but it, they should work uh, just from using the correct naming conventions. So if we go to slash users, okay, so this is the interface that it gives us, which is kind of nice. And we can create a new user, we can list posts, we can create a new post. But we're not going to focus too much on this. Um, this is just the interface. I want to focus on a login, access control, and registration. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is from here, we're going to add a new user. All right, um, so name. And email. Email, I'm just going to say test at test com and password submit okay that creates a user now you'll notice that the password is plain text and that's how it's stored in the database which is not safe at all all right so if we go to the database we go to users you can see the password is just one two three four all right so we need to hash that password we need to encrypt we can do this in the model. We want to go to the uh, model folder and then to entity and then user PHP. All right, so this pertains to a single user while the user's table pertains to the entire table. So what we want to do is just add on to this and we're going to say protected function and we want to call this underscore set password. And by using this convention, this is actually going to run when the user is created, when the password is created. All right, so we're going to pass in password, and then we just want to return new, and then we're going to instantiate the default password hasher object. So default uh, password hasher. And then we want to use the hash me method. And I'm going to pass in password. All right, and that's it. That's going to hash the password. So let's close that. Now let's go back to our application and reload. And now we're going to edit this. And you're going to want to use something different. Don't use the same password. All right, uh, paste that in and submit. Um, oh, we need to include the um, hash, the password hasher, into the entity user folder or file. So we're going to go up here, and we're just going to do use cake slash auth slash default password hasher. All right, and that should fix that. So we'll go back. Try this again. Submit, and now you can see the passwords encrypted. So if we go to our database, now it's this long hash. All right, so that's going to secure our passwords. Now what we're going to want to do is create a login uh, action in our controller. So if we go to controller and then users controller, and go down to the bottom. And we're going to add a login controller. So we'll say public function login. And then before we add anything here, let's save it. And we're going to want to create a template. So we're going to go in our users folder and say new file. Save it as login.ctp. CTP is uh, cake template, and we're going to create our form. Now, by default, we're using uh, 
foundation as a CSS framework so I want it to match what we have here so we're gonna add a couple classes okay so we're gonna say class equals index large four so we're gonna use the column system that the foundation uses medium four uh, large offset four okay I want it to offset because we want this to be in the middle of the page all right and then we're gonna do medium offset four and columns all right and then in here let's add a panel And then we're going to have an H2. And we're going to want it to align to the center. So we'll say text center. Oops, I didn't want to do that. And for the text, we'll just say login. And now we're going to do the form. And we're going to use the... Um, the form helper that Cake offers. All right, so we need our PHP shorthand tag, and then we're going to say this form create. So that's basically just going to create uh, an opening HTML form tag. All right, and then to end it down here, we'll say this form end. Alright, and then we're going to use our inputs, so we can say uh, this, whoops, this form input, alright, and then we just want to pass in the field name, which will be email. Copy that, and then this one's going to be the password. Okay, now the default type is text, so for this we need to specify that we want to use a password field. So we can pass in an array of options, and one of those options can be type. Alright, and then finally we need a button. So we'll say this form button, I'm sorry, submit, all right, and in the submit, we're going to put login, and then we have an array, I just want to add a class, okay, class is going to be button, all right, so let's save that, and see if we can go to uh, users slash login and there we go let's actually move it down a little bit so we'll just put we'll just put a line break here now kick PHP comes with an authentication component so that's what we're going to be using so we need to enable that and we can do that in controller app controller all right this app controller is extended by every other controller so it's always gonna run no matter what page you're on and you can see right in the initialized function this is where we load components so we're gonna add to this and we're just gonna say this load component Oops. and we want to load the auth component all right now there's a bunch of um, options we need to configure here which is just basically a series of arrays nested arrays so this is going to be authenticate and that's going to be pointed to another array and in there we're going to say form which will go to an array and this will be fields which will go to another array and we'll specify our fields here Alright, so the username, 
we don't have a username field, so we're going to use our email and password is whoops is going to be the password field. Okay, and then we want to go where the authenticate ends right here, put a comma and specify login action. Actually, this needs to be in quotes. All right, and then we're going to specify the controller. And for us, it's the user's controller. And we want to specify the action. And action is going to be the login action that we created. All right, so that should do it. So let's save that. And now, if let's see, if I try to go to the root, you'll see that it's not letting me. It's going to automatically block all routes and just bring us to the login form. So now let's create the login uh, action. So we want to go into the users controller, back to our login function right here. And first thing we need to do is test to see if the form was submitted. So to do that, we can say if, and we're going to say this request is, and we want to check for a post request, okay? Because when the form submitted, it's submitted as a post. All right, if it is a post, then we're going to create a user variable, and we're going to set it to this. Uh, this auth identify. All right, and then we're going to check for a user. Okay, so if user, then we're going to set the user. Okay, so basically, if, if the login passes, then we're going to say this auth set user. All right, and then after that we want to redirect. Actually, we need to return uh, return this redirect. Okay, and then we can pass in the action that we want to be redirected to, which will be uh, posts. I'm sorry, not the action, the controller. Controller posts. All right, now if it's a bad login, if it doesn't pass, then we're just going to set a message so we can use the flash component and we'll send an error. Okay, and the error will just say. Um, Incorrect login. All right, and that should do it. So let's save that. And let's go back here. And let's just try to put anything in here. We do need an email address. Okay, you can see up here we get incorrect login. All right, if I go and do the correct login. Okay, so it let us in, but let's see, set undefined method set. Um, let's see, users controller 111, this auth set user. Oh, it's supposed to be set user, like that. There we go. Okay, so now we're logged in. So now let's quickly create a logout function. All right, so I'm going to want the logout link to be up here to replace those. So if we go to template and go to layout and then default, this is the wrapper that wraps around all of our views. And this is also where the navigation is. You can see it right here. So what we're going to do, let's get rid of one of these. 
and let's change this to logout. out and we're gonna get rid of this target attribute actually you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the link helper all right so to do that we're gonna say uh, I'm sorry it's the HTML helper but it's the link method so this HTML link all right and then in here uh, we want the text to say logout and then we want to set the controller to users and we want to set the action to logout all right now we need to create that logout action in the users controller okay and all we're going to do here let's copy this flash message and we're just going to change error to success and we'll say you are logged out all right and then we just want to return the redirect okay we want to redirect to actually what we want to do is get rid of that completely and say this auth log out all right so let's save that okay let's see click log out and there we go you are logged out so in the next video in the next part we're going to implement a registration form so that a user can register and we're also going to want to hide this this logout link when we're logged out because that doesn't make very much sense <laughs>